for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. I am joined today by my good friend, the CEO and President of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Eileen, thank you first of all for being here today. Mm -hmm. We have two programs you're going to talk about. Yes. The first one is called Safe in the South Bay. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that mm -hmm. and um, all the good stuff. Oh, thank you so much, Maria, and thank you for having me. It's, it's wonderful to be here with you in studio again. Um, so um, Safe in the South Bay, I am so excited about this because this is an incredible program that is open to all businesses across the peninsula. Mm -hmm. Anyone in any one of our four cities um, can participate in this, and the Chamber is bringing this to all of the businesses throughout the community as a community service. The idea behind the program is that businesses will be able to participate and pledge that they are following the appropriate protocols for their industry, the mm -hmm. protocols from the county, you know, the LA County Department of Public Health. And once they certify that and the chamber approves it, they will be able to let their customers and their employees know that their store, their business is safe in the South Bay. And so it will be a wonderful program to let to again, just assure our residents and the community that it is safe to go into this particular restaurant, go to your dentist, go to uh, your CPA, whatever it might be, or if it's a business that comes to you, you will feel safe knowing that they are following the protocols. Uh, for people mm -hmm. that don't know, the protocols are so different for each mm -hmm. business. Yes. So how mm -hmm. does that sort of play out? Okay, well that is a great question and that is one of the things that the Chamber has been working very, very hard individually with businesses on because you are absolutely correct. It is different for a restaurant than for a bank, than for a for, dentist, than for a dentist, yes. than for or somebody in an office like a CPA or an attorney or whatever else. So what this program will do is um, businesses will go on to the Chamber website. We will have um, the Safe in the South Bay logo right on the front page, the home page, and they'll be able to click on it and there will be two links. One will be a pledge that they will look at and sign, the business owner or manager will sign and upload you know, virtually to us. Okay. Um, and the pledge is saying that they are wearing face masks, um, you know, practicing physical distancing, cleaning, washing hands, the seven or eight really basic things that apply to every business everywhere, okay? okay. Then there will be a link to the LA County Department of Public Health website Great. where they will be able to easily find their industry. If they're a childcare mm -hmm. center, if they're a restaurant, they will click on that. That gives them the protocols for their industry. Okay. They need to read through those. I'm, they have already done that, of course. If they're open, they're, they're doing it. Um, our businesses want to do the right thing. Of so course. they've done that, but they need to relook at it sign the first page, again, saying that they are doing this. Mm -hmm. Again, upload that to the chambers. We have a, a you know, like a virtual document out in, in cyberspace. So they upload it, we look at it, we make sure that they've selected the right protocols and they're doing it and then boom, they're in. Um, and then what we will do is we will deliver to each business, um, either in person or via mail, a clingy with the Safe in the South Bay logo that they can put on their in their window if they have a brick and mortar business. Um, we will also email them the Safe in the South Bay logo that they can put on their website, in their emails, on social media, again to let the community as well as their employees know that we are following the protocols and we are safe. Another mm -hmm. huge way, I think, because you know mm -hmm. we've had to get so creative mm -hmm. yes. with business mm -hmm. and getting that trust back yes. between the consumers mm -hmm. and the people running the businesses. Exactly. What has been the biggest challenge that you're hearing from mm -hmm. local businesses? I think one of the biggest challenges is um, is letting customers know that they're open because, as you know, and as you alluded to earlier in your remarks, it has been stop and start for a lot of businesses. Right. Yes. First salons couldn't open, hair salons, for example. Then they could open but they could do certain things inside and certain things outside. Then they had to close, then they could move outside. So it has been a bit of a roller coaster. Absolutely. Um, and the same thing with restaurants. So I mean, I think restaurants and salons and gyms have had, they've because they've been kind of in Governor Newsom's fourth phase or third and fourth phase, they right. have been, it's been more problematic for them. So I think for the businesses, it has been letting the community know that they're open. And obviously the chamber, 
particularly with our social media and our website, have been really pushing what businesses are open. And I think to your point is that this Safe in the South Bay program will be another way yes. that they can let people know that they're open because it gives the businesses a pretense to email their customers, put it out on social media, whatever it might be. And I think for a lot mm -hmm. of businesses, mm -hmm. the hours are not back to normal. Correct. Some mm -hmm. of them start a little mm -hmm. later, they end a little mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a good idea because people can actually go into the websites and say, oh, great, they're open, but they close at six instead of seven. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And interestingly, so for, for our chamber members, they're all listed on our website mm -hmm. and there's a direct link to their website. So if you want to check quickly to see if what hours Avenue Italy might be open, for example, um, you can go literally just go to pvchamber.com, click, you know, alphabetically search on them, find Avenue Italy, click Avenue Italy, click on that, and it'll take you right to their site and you can see their, their hours. So that's another way to do it. And I know yeah. you have literally been working 24-7, <laughs> but yeah. really, mm -hmm. if you think about the communication that you've mm -hmm. had with the local businesses, probably mm -hmm. never been busier. Absolutely. It's totally, I mean, just as you mentioned earlier, that businesses have to be creative. The Chamber is a business. We're a nonprofit, independent, or independent nonprofit organization. And so we've had to completely pivot and move everything online and change our focus. Um, we've become a huge curator and disseminator of information to businesses, a lot of one-on-one -on -one consulting with businesses. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so gratified when I can work with a business owner and they tell me, you help save my business. Yes. You help me get that loan. You help me hear about a grant or a program or whatever. I mean, that's at the heart of what the chamber does. So we're, you know, it's, it is, you're right. It's very long hours, but <laughs> that's what we're committed to doing. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. also with this program, what mm -hmm. kind of response are you getting from local business? They are very, very excited about it. So they're very excited about it. And I should mention that this program was actually started by the Beach Cities Health District um, in Redondo Beach. And um, they started it in the Beach Cities and I contacted them and said, hey, our chamber would like to be a part of this with you. And they said yes. So it's great because it's going to give, as this program grows throughout the South Bay, mm -hmm. it will give our businesses here on the peninsula even more publicity, even more more marketing traction, if that makes sense. It, it does. Sense. And yeah. I, you know, mm -hmm. I also think that if you think about it overall, mm -hmm. everybody, every community really mm -hmm. needs to do this because yes. mm -hmm. we are in an, a time right now where mm -hmm. this is going to go on for a while. Right, exactly. And you want to know that everybody is mm -hmm. uh, adhering to the protocols. Mm -hmm. It's a clean when you walk in. And having that sticker, mm -hmm. almost like the restaurants have the, they have the, the, the number, the yeah. letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that that just adds that extra, hey, right. it, it's okay to come back in here, mm -hmm. that extra vote of confidence. Exactly. And so I know absolutely, and it's so important because again, mm -hmm. we all have trepidations and we understand yep. that. And so this is a great opportunity for the businesses to communicate. We are serious about this. We are doing everything that we are supposed to do, if not more, right. and let the community know that. The other thing that the chamber is going to do on on top of that, to just again help get the word out is, um, again, this is open to all businesses throughout our community. There is no charge to participate, Great. which is awesome. Uh -huh. What the chamber will do for the businesses that happen to be members of the chamber is, I will go and physically, personally deliver their clingy. I'm gonna do a quick little video. We're gonna throw Great. it out on social media for them and they'll be highlighted um, on our website as well. So just, again, it's another way to not only let the community know that these businesses are safe, but to your earlier question, Maria, it will let the community to know that these businesses are open. Yes, and that's you know, the most important so thing. So important, yeah, so important. We want the yeah. customers to come back for yeah. sure, absolutely, especially yeah. local mm -hmm. business because it's yes. so mm -hmm. important to shop in your community. Absolutely. As we well yeah. know. Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. Eileen, moving on mm -hmm. to the, the next topic mm -hmm. is called Leadership Peninsula, mm -hmm. and the Chamber has been so great with programs that mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. that really do lead. You have your young entrepreneurs, yes. which mm -hmm. teach young people mm -hmm. how to be in business. We've seen such creativeness, mm -hmm. is that a word, creativeness, mm -hmm. from <laughs> younger people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really just amazing. Mm -hmm. And you've had so many good speakers come in, mm -hmm. and I'm sure this will be very much the same. Tell us about leadership. Oh my gosh, thank Peninsula. you. Well, we yeah. are so excited. This is something that um, the Chamber has wanted to do for a while. Okay. And, um, you know, like everything, we we work, we still do our Young Entrepreneurs Program. We've done yes. that for seven years now. So successful. Just wrapped up. Over 200 kids have been through that program. So awesome. Amazing. Leadership Peninsula is different in that it is an innovative program that is really designed to develop um, and connect 
current and rising leaders, adults throughout the community. So this is open to everyone, okay? Whether you are a business leader, maybe you wanna be a nonprofit leader, maybe you're a stay-at-home parent and you'd like to um, get more involved in your local government and apply for a position on the traffic commission or the planning commission, or you just wanna be more involved in the Peninsula community. Okay. This will be a nine-month program um, for a limited number of people that will really connect you to the people and the issues and the institutions and organizations that are the leaders and the movers and the shakers throughout the community. So it will draw extensively on the chamber's network yes, of people say. that we know yes. okay, throughout the community and indeed throughout the South Bay. Um, and it will prepare people who are interested, who want to be, who may be leaders already, okay. either in their business or in their nonprofit, volunteer lives, um, you know, whatever it may be in schools, whatever it might be, people who want to be part of shaping the future of the peninsula. Um, because they are going to be immersed and do and really learn pretty much about every topic that touches the community. And I can share with you like a little Please. bit about the curriculum. Yes. But in addition, they will also be meeting and building a network of their own, okay. Okay, which makes it so powerful. This is exciting. It is. I am so excited about this. And so we've worked very, very hard. So it will be, so again, it's open to anyone in the community. Okay. okay. You don't have to be a business. You don't have to be in business. Okay. Um, and the um, program will run for nine months. It will start in October. Um, obviously, probably in October, we'll be starting virtually, but okay. we hope that to was, be moving. That was my first question. Exactly. <laughs> we hope to be moving in person. It will be eight hours a month, okay? Um, and initially, with virtually, we're going to split it into two days because who could sit in front of a camera for that long? Yes. So we're going to split it into two days. When we're in person, it will be one day of the week. Okay. Um, and we're going to start out by, we have a, a program for each month. So we're going to start out initially with doing a deep dive into the concept of leadership. What makes a leader? What do leaders look like? How will leadership change going forward? Okay, in the into the 2020s and the 2030s, what are the characteristics of a good leader? All of that. So we'll have a whole deep dive on that. We will be bringing in experts from academia, from the business world, people who are proven leaders in the community um, to actually run that session. There'll be some advanced readings to do. It's gonna be very cool. Second session, which will be in November, we're gonna do a deep dive into the history of the peninsula. Ooh. We will talk about, we'll go over to Point Vicente and learn about the um, uh, Native Americans who were, or the Native Americans who were here, um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the geography and the topology. We'll talk about the Vanderlips. We'll bring in the library and understand the Palos Verdes Historical Society. In other words, one whole day on how Palos Verdes came to be where we are today. Great. So really excited about that. I mean, there's such a rich history here. This is like an immersion it of the history it is of, an the, immersion. Okay. of the peninsula. So that is, that is week number. I that is this. That is November. In December, we're going to focus on four cities, one peninsula. So the idea is we have four cities here. Do That's people right. understand that? So we will be inviting in the city managers, the city um, city councils to talk to the people in this program about what makes their city unique, um, what are the issues and challenges that Rancho Palos Verdes is facing, which might be different than Palos Verdes Estates, exactly. Rolling Hills, et cetera. So we really want the, the cohort, the people in this program, to understand the workings of the four cities and, and what I don't they think, do. I don't really think everybody does understand no, that. So no. that's going to be an, no, another exactly. great Nor topic. Nor do they have access to to talk individually with with these leaders. Exactly. You know, exactly. Both the staff leaders as well as the as the elected officials. So right. that will be one whole day. In January, we're going to focus on business and the local economy, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about what sectors make up our local economy, what are the driving economic forces in the South Bay, you know, things like health care, you know, whatever it might be. What they, we want them to understand the underpinnings of the economy and um, what makes it tick. So we'll be obviously bringing in business leaders for that to understand all aspects of the economic life of the South Bay. In February, we're going to focus on what I'm calling from kindergarten to college, the importance of education on the community. So we will Great. bring in leaders from the public schools, the private schools, Marymount. Did you know we, well, you probably do know we have the Salvation Army. You know, we have a college here for officer training. So education, as we've talked about, is very, very important to this community. So we want to take one day and do a deep dive into education so they will understand that. In March, we're going to talk about are you safe and how do you get there? 
So we want to, again, bring in the LA, the sheriff, you know, bring in the PBE police, bring in the various public safety agencies, um, and talk about how that works. You know, how do we how do we provide public safety to our community? And then transportation. What's going on with LA Metro? What's going on with the with the um, the extension of the Green Line? Things like that, so mm -hmm. that they really understand transportation and how that impacts the community. Because you need to have transportation for a community to grow and thrive. Um, the next week, we're almost there in April, next month, excuse me, we're going to focus on natural resources and the environment because clearly the city of Rancho Palos Verdes was founded on the principle of preserving our coastline. Right. So we want to bring in the Land Conservancy, Heal the Bay, all the key organizations that are focused on sustainability and the environment and understand how, what that means to our community and how do we preserve that going forward. In May, we will be um, talking and focusing on arts, culture, entertainment, and the nonprofit sector. So what do we offer here in the community in terms of arts education, mm -hmm. um, or arts, arts education, um, culture, things like that, entertainment, you know, um, being outside, as well as the nonprofit sector. Because we have a lot of nonprofits throughout the community, and we want to really focus on them, whether it's the um, Peninsula Education Foundation or the um, Palos Verdes Arts Center, the Norris Theater, whatever it might be, let's really focus in on those nonprofits. And then they're going to wrap. We will also do an optional trip to Sacramento oh. to, um, if people would like to, to go up and um, partner. It'll be part of the Cal Chambers, California Chamber of Commerce's annual legislative trip. And we will meet with our local legislators, um, with our assembly member and our senator, and um, advocate and, and really walk them around the Capitol and help them understand how, how the government in Sacramento, how we work with them. So very cool. And they're going to wrap it up with not only a recognition and celebration in June, but the class is going to have to do a community service project. So they're going to have mm. to figure out something that would be meaningful to the peninsula as a whole. They're going to have to fundraise for it, and they're going to have to make it happen. And in doing that, they're going to not only help give back to the community, but it's, again, it's going to help them build really strong bonds you know, and network and all of that. So that's the curriculum. I appreciate you're letting me go through it. I could not be more excited about this. Uh, you know what? I'm excited. <laughs> and this is going to be a limited number of people, yes? Exactly. Exactly. We're, we're, we'll probably cap it at about 24 because oh. we think that's Sign a up good now. number. Exactly. Um, so the application, again, um, will be on the Chamber website. Okay. Um, the application is open for about a month because we're going to be starting in early October. There is a tuition for this um, because of just the it's logistics amazing. of putting it together. Yes. But it's in line with other, you know, other programs of a similar, you know, the similar nature. So I do need to mention that. Um, but we are very excited about bringing this to the community. It has been um, it's 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 been needed, and I think it will be an amazing opportunity and to bring people together to leverage the chamber's connections with all this. I didn't mention I want to bring in uh, somebody from LA Ports and somebody from LAX to talk about the economic impact you know that the ports and LAX have on our community and the South Bay. So I mean, there's was, no shortage of cool things we can talk about. Well, this is such yeah. a huge undertaking. How did you put this all together? You thought, Eileen's thought of yeah. everything. <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, you do, you do your research. You know, you look at other leadership programs across the country and you see what they're talking about and what they're doing. And then it's clearly what's needed for our community. Right. So, you know, we do need a day focused on the history of the peninsula because it is so rich. We do need a day focused on education because it's so important. It's part of our core values of this community is right. education. So it was really looking at what else is going on around the country, drawing from that, and then putting our own um, knowledge and insights and spin on it. It's great. So, yeah. And I love the mm -hmm. fact that really, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been, you know, the COVID-19 thing has really mm -hmm. sidelined a lot of people, but not you, not the, not <laughs> no. the Chamber of Commerce not here on the Hill. Not at all. So, yeah. Very so, good. So I think this will be great. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're very excited about this. It will bring people to, you know, it'll, it'll create bonds and help people meet each other and network. Yes. And at the end of the day, they'll be able to be more engaged and um, productive citizens, okay, whatever it might be, if they're volunteering at a local nonprofit or they're wanting to serve on, you know, the traffic commission for one of the cities, something right. like that, or maybe they're, a, they might be a business leader, whatever it is, they will be more knowledgeable about the peninsula and only good can come from that. Only good, because if you have that knowledge, then you're making decisions and, and, and doing things based on knowledge rather than 
you know, well, I think that happens. So let's give everybody the knowledge and the tools and the education um, so that together we can continue to make this community even more amazing than it is. So exciting. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. give out the Chamber's website so we can mm -hmm. make sure that people can yes, go yes, to the website. Very easy, palosverdeschamber.com. Okay, Just that Google is easy. Google Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce or Google Palos Verdes Chamber and you'll find us. Thank All right. you. That's great. Now, mm -hmm. Eileen, I wanted to talk about one more topic before mm -hmm. we go, and that is every year, the Chamber gives out business awards yes. to businesses mm -hmm. all over the South Bay, mm -hmm. and that got pushed back because mm -hmm. of COVID. Usually, it's a, a beautiful lunch at Trump National. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so this year, you are still making the event happen. Absolutely. It's happening, mm -hmm. and we usually do a show, which we are absolutely 100% doing. Mm -hmm. We've got some special guests that are going to be on the show mm -hmm. this year. And you're still you're still doing this. So talk absolutely. a little bit about the business awards. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the salute to business awards, as you know, are membership driven. So yes. um, earlier in the spring, um, members, chamber members, were asked to nominate other businesses, other okay. chamber members who they felt were deserving of recognition for excellence in business. And this year, they and so they submit the nominations, and then we have a committee of members who actually look through all the nominations anonymously, make their selections, and recommend them to the board. So it's a membership driven process because we're a membership organization and right. so um, this year they have selected five phenomenal businesses to honor um, some iconic businesses and of course there's always a best new business That's right. um, which spoiler alert is located right here yes, in Rancho very Palos Verdes. Close to where we're sitting right exactly. now. Exactly <laughs> so, um, so we're really looking forward to shining a light um, on these businesses and letting the community know they already know but doesn't hurt to remind um, how how phenomenal these businesses are. We're just very excited to honor them and um, you know, share their stories with the yes. community. So I'm grateful to you for, for highlighting that on one of your upcoming shows. Well, we love doing mm -hmm. it. We love learning more about mm -hmm. the businesses, how they come to be. Um, mm -hmm. Some people have been here a very long time, very successful yes. businesses. Mm -hmm. Some people are just starting out. Mm -hmm. We've just met so many amazing people mm -hmm. along the way. So uh, we're going to be very excited to bring that to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. very mm -hmm. good. Well, Eileen, thank you so much for mm -hmm. being here today mm -hmm. and really giving us so much important information. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a little bit about the fact that we've had to be creative with mm -hmm. helping people get back to business. Correct. And we've got mm -hmm. somebody from the city coming on next that's going to tell the community how they can get a free permit to move their businesses outside, mm -hmm. outdoors, so they can keep on, mm -hmm. keeping on, as we say. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we will be right back. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. And thanks again for coming in today, Eileen. Thank you, Maria. Hi, I'm Ara Maranian, City Manager of Rancho Palos Verdes, here to inform our residents about the Hawthorne Boulevard Median Beautification Project. The project will consist of removing existing asphalt in the medians and installing new landscaping. This will take place on Hawthorne Boulevard between Crest Road and Palos Verdes Drive West. For the safety of all of those working in the street, please slow down and pay attention to posted signs as well as cones on the road. Construction is expected to be completed in the fall of 2020. Thank you, and remember, we are all working to make Rancho Palos Verdes even more beautiful. We are now joined by Ken Rukavina, who is a director of community development right here at the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Ken, thanks so much for being with us today. And we are talking about businesses really getting back to business. And one of the things that the city has been so great about is really helping them hand in hand. And some businesses need to move outside because inside doesn't work. And I know that you're offering permits for free for these businesses. So I thought it would be great to have you kind of come in and explain that process to us because I know it's not simple, but there's a little bit of a process to it. Sure, and thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So that I could talk to you about this um, particular you. topic. It's um, something we really want to do to help the businesses. So as you know, back in July, um, the county closed the business again in response to the um, ramping COVID. up of the infections mm -hmm. and the hospitalizations. And the city wanted to be proactive in helping our businesses who were hurt tremendously by the pandemic and the closures. And so the city manager had issued a local directive on June 27th, which paved the way for us to actually develop a, a temporary special use permit. That's great. That would allow for certain businesses, such as restaurants, personal care facilities, nail hair salons, or um, fitness centers 
to open up in outdoor spaces. That's great. And that would help them to be able to still operate and comply with the orders that have been issued by the County of Los Angeles. And, and what kind of paperwork do they have to give you to show that they're, they can do this? It's actually really simple. Um, the city developed a temporary special use permit. Okay. Um, the application requires a, a sim simply fill in an application uh, with a site plan on how they intend to utilize the outdoor space. Okay. Um, one of the real caveats, though, is that they need to have the permission of the, the landlord. Right. Because obviously we understand as a city that um, a tenant you know, has access to a certain portion of the property. And so, you know, it's not the city's purview to be able to just allow use. So that's one of the caveats. Um, but once they get that permission, they submit the application with a site plan to the city and will process it without a fee, as you mentioned. Right. Um, we do have some limitations. So, for example, we're limiting the, the, the number of tables, for example, in a restaurant to the, to the maximum amount they're allowed indoors, okay. things like that. Mm -hmm. So social distancing, making sure the protocols are all in place. Absolutely. Um, we encourage all those businesses, whether it's a restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, personal care, or fitness, to go onto the, the county public health website okay. and look up and, and follow their protocols that they stipulate and for exactly what you said, the social distancing, mm -hmm. um, all the PPE that the, that the servers or the... Um, the service workers need to wear. And how long will this program go for? The temporary special use permit will be available as long as the current closures are in, in effect. Okay. So once um, we get past this and the restaurants and the personal care and fitness centers are allowed to reopen inside again, then that's at the point when the this particular program will end. When they wanted to be outside anywhere, they can move back they in. They can move inside, yes. And I imagine a lot of people are going to want to stay outside and find yeah. opportunities <laughs> for that. So that's something I think we'll have to work work on in the future. But that 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 really would require possible zone change or right. revisions to conditional use permits for the site use and things like that. So it, it won't be necessarily a, a slam dunk. Yeah. But you know, I think that we'll all you know be looking at the paradigm shift that we might need to make in that regard. Now, if somebody has a business where there's a huge parking lot outside, how does that work? They have to get permission to block off the spaces, or how would that work? Well, yes, exactly, and that's why we want the the business owners to work with the landlord because obviously there are other tenants in the the center for example that actually need to have parking spaces for their operation whether it's an office or something that is currently in operation so we encourage the the business to work with the landlord where they to develop and identify space mm -hmm. that they can use like parking spaces that you know they don't need to use at the moment because right. obviously you know demand is lower than it was in the past so that's probably the first step Okay. And I would encourage all the businesses to talk to the landlord first. Right. Um, then come to the city. Then come to the city. But anybody's welcome to call us up. Um, they could contact the planning department. One of our planners will be happy to walk through the process. Very good. And they can also go to the website, yes? Absolutely. Go to the website. Um, probably the easiest way is if they go to the, our website, rpvca.gov. <laughs> and up in the search bar, type in TSUP. Okay. And, it will, and then you'll pop up with links that website is probably one of the very best websites as far as information goes. You can really find anything on the website. Absolutely. And as I mentioned, if you, the easiest way to get to the, the temporary special use permit is go into the search bar, type okay. in TSUP. Okay. And at that point, links will pop up where you can click on to actually get to the application and further information. Perfect. Well, we will look forward to doing that. Great information, Ken. Thank you so much for being with us today and uh, telling us about how the permit program works. Well, you're welcome, and thank you again for having me. And that will do it for today's show. Thanks to both of my guests and to you, of course, for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.